In the midst of World War II, German U-boats made it all but impossible for the Allied forces to deliver supplies and assistance to England. Their technology allowed them to intercept radio signals from the Allies and gather intel that told them when and where the ships were headed. The solution to the problem came from a Hollywood bombshell whose genius intellect was often overshadowed by her beauty. Hedy Lamarr was considered the most beautiful woman in the world at the height of her acting career. Her looks and air of intrigue captivated audiences around the world. But Lamar herself never understood other people's fascination with her looks or career as a Hollywood bombshell. It was not her looks that she valued, but rather her mind that she prized above everything else. What many don't know is that Hedy Lamar was a brilliant woman whose love of tinkering and inventing ultimately created one of today's most valued pieces of technology. Before we get into the story, if you're interested in early access to videos and live chats with the creator of Intrigued Mind, consider subscribing to our Patreon. Your support will greatly help us keep the channel producing more intriguing content. Born Hedwig Eva Maria Kiesler in Vienna, Austria on November 9, 1914, Lamar came from an upper-class family. Her father was a successful bank director, and in his downtime, he enjoyed spending time with his daughter. They would take long walks together and discuss topics that encouraged Lamar to embrace her curious mind and explore the world's complexities. At only five years old, Lamar could often be found tearing apart small machines, like her music box, so that she could see how they worked and functioned. Lamar also developed a love of the arts, a passion that she undoubtedly inherited from her mother, a concert pianist. She studied acting at a young age, and by 1932, at only 18, she had gained notoriety for her role in the controversial film Ecstasy. By the end of her career, Hedy would be considered one of the greatest actresses of all time. To say she was beautiful would be an understatement. At age 12, she won a beauty contest in Vienna, and as she grew, her bombshell appeal began to garner worldwide attention. For the most part, Lamar was able to brush off the hordes of men that fought for the slightest bit of her attention. But when the man who had become her first husband insisted on meeting the actress, she fell for his charm. Friedrich Mandel was an Austrian arms dealer who had strong ties to both Benito Mussolini and later Adolf Hitler. Although her parents disapproved, they both came from Jewish backgrounds, Lamar and Mandel were married in 1932. Her marriage to him was difficult, and it was not long before she realized the mistake she had made by marrying him. Mandel was extremely controlling of both her body and mind. She was no longer allowed to be an actress, but instead was paraded around as his arm candy. There were some aspects of the marriage that Lamar enjoyed, however. During their time together, she not only attended parties with Mandel, but also traveled with him to business meetings. It was during these interactions that Lamar got her first opportunity to interact with real scientists and learn about topics that both fascinated her and scared her. She would see science in action on several occasions and learn a good deal of military intel that would come in handy later. Having had enough of Mandel's controlling ways, she ultimately fled to London to escape the marriage that she later described as a prison, taking with her a wealth of knowledge she had learned from sitting around Mandel's table, hobnobbing with people who would soon be key players within the Axis powers of World War II. While in London, she met Louis Mayer of MGM Studios. Mayer was intrigued, and it was not long before he understood that Lamar could help his studio's popularity in a major way. He whisked her away to Hollywood and put her in American movies, where she captured the attention of audiences with her beauty and talent. In 1938, Mayer began a campaign promoting Lamar as the most beautiful woman in the world, a title that few could refute. She went on to star in movies such as I Take This Woman alongside Spencer Tracy, Comrade X with Clark Gable, Come Live With Me starring Jimmy Stewart, and many more. While the world of acting provided a life many could only dream of, Lamar quickly grew bored and restless. While most Hollywood socialites could be found at glamorous parties, Lamar preferred staying home or swimming in her manager's backyard pool if she needed to get out. Acting, it turned out, was not enough of a challenge for her brilliant mind. Unfortunately, few people in Hollywood recognized her intelligence, and many could not see her as anything more than a pretty face. When she tried to join the National Inventors Council, convinced that her knowledge and capability could help with war efforts, she was told her time would be better spent by using her beauty and celebrity to sell war bonds and encourage enlistment. It was not until Lamar met Howard Hughes that she found someone who truly recognized her innovative mind and loved her for it. Hughes and Lamar became romantically involved, and he was the first person besides her father to encourage her to embrace her intellectual side. Hughes even gifted Lamar a small set of chemistry equipment for her trailer that she could use in her downtime to experiment and invent with. He also made his chemist available to her. One such invention that came from this was her creation of a tablet that turned water into a fizzy cola beverage. During the war, there was limited access to cola drinks, and Lamar wanted to make them more accessible to those working in factories or servicemen. While it did not catch on in popularity, it proved to her that she could do more than stand still and look pretty. Together, Hughes and Lamar explored airplane factories and discussed the science behind flight. 
In an effort to help Hughes on his mission to design the fastest airplane in the world, Lamar purchased books on birds and fish and studied the shapes and makeup of some of the fastest kinds of both species. Using what she learned, she sketched out a new wing design for Hughes, who raved over the designs and called her a genius. And a genius she was. Although she had many inventions, in 1940, Lamar invented perhaps the most critical piece of technology in the modern era. At the outbreak of World War II, German U-boats were equipped with a technology that allowed the Axis powers to intercept and jam Allied radio waves. This technology made it extremely difficult for the Allied forces to counteract U-boats and therefore very hard to get supplies to Great Britain. Having read an article that proposed the concept of radio-controlled torpedoes, Lamar was intrigued. However, the obvious downside of such an invention was that the Axis powers had the capability of jamming the guidance and communication systems, rendering the radio-controlled weapons useless. She discussed the concept with a friend, George Antile, a composer known for his outlandish thinking and experimental music scores. Besides being a successful musician, Antile also shared Lamar's love of invention and science. Together, they worked tirelessly and came up with a new and improved communication system that would be able to successfully guide torpedoes to their intended targets using what they called frequency hopping. Frequency hopping occurs when both a transmitter and a receiver hop to new frequency waves together rather than staying on a single wave. By moving together, both the receiver and transmitter remain in contact, but the radio signals become nearly impossible to track and jam. By the time the signal is located, it has already moved on to another frequency. This would allow a torpedo to be guided and hit the intended target successfully. After creating the system, Lamar and Antile applied for a patent and took their idea to the military, seeking their support. While they were ultimately granted patent number 2,292,387 in 1942, the military never implemented the innovative communication system. One reason for this was because Lamar was Austrian-born and had spent several years married to a Nazi sympathizer. Some were worried she was a spy. Others rejected the concept because they were skeptical that Lamar had the ability to invent such a complex concept. They thought perhaps she learned about this technology from her time with German scientists and was simply using their ideas. None of these fears were anything more than misplaced and misogynistic suspicion. However, their work would eventually become a staple of society. Lamar and Antal's work with frequency hopping is better known as spread spectrum, which is ubiquitous in modern technology. Importantly, it is a critical feature in allowing Wi-Fi to operate. The same principles are used in both Bluetooth and GPS technology. It is what allows cell phones to make phone calls, send texts, and map an individual's movements. The world would be a drastically different place if Hedy Lamar had not hit upon this fundamental invention. Few women in Hollywood have been as misunderstood as Hedy Lamar. Unfortunately, her intelligence and brilliant mind were overlooked by most, who could only see her as the most beautiful woman in the world. In her later years, Lamar became somewhat of a recluse. She was rarely seen outside her home and stopped making movies altogether. Sadly, Lamar passed away in 2000, but her contribution to the world was integral. In 2014, she was posthumously inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame and finally given the recognition she deserves. For more videos on the most amazing forgotten parts of our history, be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel, like the video, and leave your suggestions in the comments below.